Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life. And today I thought I'd review a few Living Metanoia, Finding Freedom and Fulfillment in Christ by Father Dave. <laughs> Sorry, there was a lot of alliteration going on in there. And if you know me, um, tongue twisters are not my friend. And so that's why I was laughing. Also, if you can see that there's something <laughs> horrifically wrong with my hands, I ended up with poison ivy all over my hands. Um, I went out last Friday. Remember I was trying to get that little corner of the backyard that's untamed and get out all those invasive... <laughs> Um, roses, the ones with the thorns that are upside down and so nasty. And I knew there was poison ivy back there. I was super duper careful and I came in then. I took off all the protective clothing I'd been wearing, put it all in the wash. I'm washing it with Technu. I have Technu Extreme to scrub down my hands and arms with cold water. Like I did all the things. And it's funny because the poison ivy didn't show up um, that day, didn't show up that night. Um, didn't show up Saturday. On Sunday, I had a little bubble here. Did it again with Technu like twice. Um, and then today, Monday morning, woke up and it was spread all over my hands. My husband said he thought my arthritis was bothering me my night because the way I was holding my hand, he's like, that's why I put the pillow under you to prep. What are you talking about? So apparently it started in the night <laughs> and I was sleeping with my hands in weird positions to try and make it less. I think because it's between my fingers, maybe I was holding my fingers at a weird angle. I don't know. There's also a little bit here on my wrist. So maybe I was trying not to touch anything in my sleep because it was itchy. I don't know. But sometimes life is like that. You think you're doing everything right. You're taking every precaution. You're doing everything you can be. And something weird and funky still happens to you. And do you throw aside all those precautions? Just be like, oh, well, that's junk. It didn't do anything anyway. And just throw it all aside. Or do you go more deeply and really use it as a time to reflect? So, okay, could I have taken a few more precautions out there? As soon as I saw that poison ivy, because I didn't see it at first, I thought I could get to the multiflora rose without the poison ivy. Oh, and that's why my hand, <laughs> there's like little scars everywhere because those thorns do get stuck in your hand everywhere. So I accepted that risk. And I did see the poison ivy. I thought I stayed away from it because it's wrapped around the tree, but maybe some of the roots are entangled and I didn't see that. Um, but once I realized it was even back there, did I back away or did I stay in that funky situation? It's like that in life. Again, sometimes we have some questionable situations and we think we can handle it and we can't. And it, it's really is part of our daily conversion, metanoia, turning. And it's like the uh, logo I have for our, our Blooming Catholic Life, which isn't a real thing, but there's that painting I have. It's like a Christmas tree and there's a vine growing on with flowers. And those flowers, you know how the, the whenever you decorate a Christmas tree, it's continually going around. And as it gets a little bit higher, if it was a real flower vine, it would turn and bloom the way flowers do. You have to constantly turn to stay in contact with that Christmas tree and to see the light. Have you ever seen especially sunflowers throughout the day? They turn to the light and we have to do that as well. So this book is Living Metanoia. I probably grabbed this when we did our trip to Steubenville. It's in the stack of books over there. I haven't even touched from Steubenville yet. So Odds are that's where I grabbed it from. It is published by our Sunday Visitor. You'd think Franciscan you know, University of Steubenville would have their own press. I don't know, but it was published by our Sunday Visitor. Um, it is a $20 book, which is kind of surprising because it's not huge. Here's, mm, what's a book you know? <laughs> ah, a lot of people know the Father Michael Gately books, and here's one of those. So, same size this way as a Father Michael Gately book, but look how much skinnier it is, okay? So that that's why I was kind of surprised it was so much, but it could be worth it. I'm not saying it's not, I'm just making observations here. Um, say that you don't, that's not a way that you do it. Well, here's a <laughs> Liturgy of the Hours. Much thinner. Um, if you're not of that ilk, here is the Benedictus, which I had misplaced for March, just got it. So the Benedictus is shorter and a little bit thicker. 
very interesting and hey it's only a couple days later on the benedictus what's today today's the seventh it's only seven took me six days took me six days to find it i put it in with the bills for some reason i don't know anyway so finding freedom and fulfillment in christ i almost want to say finding freedom and fulfillment and following christ just why not one one more f in there <laughs> the Nihil Obstat is by Monsignor Michael Heinz, PhD, Sensor Laborum. Imprimatur is by Kevin C. Rhodes, the Bishop of Fort Wayne, South Bend. And that was given in February 25th, 2021. So this is a fairly recent book. I'm surprised. It must have just come out right before we were there. I'm thinking. I think it was it was brand new. This table of contents, super. This is lovely, easy to read, right? It's got the page numbers here, chapter one, the title, page number. This is a beautiful table of contents, folks. Publishers, if you're out there, this is what we're looking for. This is awesome. So, what are the chapters? Who do you say I am? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Death and life, sin and mercy. Jesus prays, I am the bread of life called and chosen, power over the evil one. This teaching is hard. Do you love me? And then there's an epilogue. Oh, there was an, did I say the introduction? I hope I did. Introduction, we're gonna read just a tiny passage of that here. I'm not very good at languages. And by that, I mean, I am terrible at them. It's been a family joke since the second time I took intro to Spanish in high school. And it didn't end in high school. I can still remember sitting next to the phone in my room as a senior in college, waiting for my Spanish professor to call to let me know if I passed my Spanish and would be graduating. I graduated. So when I say I don't know Greek, I mean, I don't know Greek. But there is one word in Greek that I fell in love with the first time I heard it. I've never forgotten it. It has been a part of the way I have lived my life ever, every day since. Metanoia. I was a 20-year-old kid and taking a year off college serving with the National Evangelization, National Evangelization Teams, NET Ministries. Today they call that a gap year, but back then we called it dropping out. One of the presenters during... Bet you can hear Rusty. One of the presenters during our training was teaching from Mark's Gospel. The very first words of Jesus in this gospel are, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark 1.15 Is it significant that this is the first thing Jesus says in Mark's gospel? Jesus proclaims that the kingdom of God is at hand. This would have been music to the ears of those listening. The Jewish people had been praying for God's reign to come. And finally the Messiah had come. The people of God would be liberated. So the kingdom of God is at hand. What are we supposed to do? Repent in Greek. Metanoia. In reality, the translation repent doesn't really do the word metanoia justice. It does mean repent. This is key and can't be lost. Jesus announces that God's kingdom has finally arrived and it is necessary that we repent. We need to recognize that we have been living in a manner which is inconsistent with the kingdom of God and we need to change. It is and will also be essential to a life of faith. But when we look deeper into the meaning of the word, metanoia means to change or more specifically, to change direction. We are going one way, thinking one way, behaving one way, and we need to change to be converted. It goes on. I'm not going to ruin that for you, friends. It's a couple page into the introduction, and it really sets the stage. And you think, who do you say I am? You know, you hear that sometimes, and it becomes a little trite, because almost every catechesis program starts out with that. So why, why does he start with that? Why does everybody start with it? Because it is key. Jesus even asked that question in the gospel, so it is not trite. It's okay. Uh, you know, everybody's thinking it. So how many pages are in here? Actually, including the epilogue, 129. And then like world's tiniest acknowledgements page. There's no, is there any note? Oh, world's tiniest about the author. <laughs> There's not even there's not even a picture of Father Dave in here. You know him or you don't. Are there questions at the end of the chapter? Yes. Oh, there are. I didn't even know that. Okay. So at the end, I'm looking at the end of chapter 7, which is page 84, questions. So this chapter is called Called and Chosen. And at the end, there are some questions. What defines you? How do you think God sees you? Jesus continues to choose you even at your worst moment. What stirs in your heart when you pray about this? 
When Jesus calls us, he calls us out of something into his light, healing, freedom, grace, and love. What is he calling you out of? And then there's a metanoia. Come Holy Spirit. And then there's there's like a little prayer almost. It's it's not really a prayer. It's a reflection. It's a reflection. It's a meditate. It's a meditation. The, the very last sentence: meditate on this for a while and ask to feel God's personal love for you. So it is a metanoia moment. It's a little. You're going to call in the Holy Spirit. Now this just says, "Come Holy Spirit," and then it starts into the meditation. But of course, you could, as we're doing with our 33-day consecration to Mary, to Jesus through Mary, the the new one, new one, <laughs> Saint Louis de Montfort one. Um, it has several prayers that we use to do come Holy Spirit. So you could always get them. There's lots of hymns. Most of them with the exact same names and words, but with different tunes to call to the Holy Spirit. So if you need that to help you get into meditation, go ahead, do that. If you have a little home shrine set up, go ahead, light your candle or turn on your battery powered candle, whichever is appropriate for you. Sing the song or play some music really invoking um, come Holy Spirit. There's a lovely one by Francesca Batticelli as well um, to the Holy Spirit. So you really want to call him in and really to help you enter into that meditation. We are sensory people. That's why our sacraments all have form and matter. Everything has a physical sensory aspect to it. So I just think it's going to help you get a little bit more deeply into that. And maybe there's directions in here that we skipped that say that. I literally just picked this up. And yes, they all seem to have that. There's little questions and it's just one or two questions. That's not too much. And really the questions, you don't have to write out your answers. You totally could. But from what I'm seeing, you probably want to look at those questions. You may want to pray, do the prayer before you start the questions. Uh, St. Francis's prayer before the crucifix is probably a great one to do before you do the questions. So, you know, um, Why am I blanking out? You know, give me right faith, certain hope, truth, and knowledge, your Lord, so that I may live out and do thy holy will. Um, So you're going to want to, I would pray that prayer. Look at the questions, kind of ponder them, and then do something to help you call down the Holy Spirit, whatever you need to do. Get out a home shrine, light a candle, set up a lovely San Damiano cross. Um, I did get a new one and immediately misplaced it. Seriously, folks. <laughs> this is very interesting. I A friend got this for me. It is made in Hungary. She probably brought, bought it in England. It is a Holy Spirit crucifix sort of cross. So up here, I believe it's Lazarus being raised from the tomb. Over here is the famous Trinity. I believe this is the Annunciation. And this one looks to me like Pentecost. And so this could be a lovely cross to have out as well. You could have both of these. Pray to this one, right? Really get this one out for the questions. And then if you were an imagery kind of person, this may be a good one to have out. These are all, okay, maybe not this one, but they're all moments, the others are moments of conversion. And so they could be really great ones to have out when you're doing the metanoia meditation at the end. I don't know the name of this either, but if you look up Holy Spirit um, cross, this image usually comes up. There may be, one of these might be slightly different. It might be Lazarus. Uh, they, they tend to have all the same ones. There's one spot that's variation, and I think it's this one up here. Not 100% sure on that. Um, but you could probably find that. My friend Kate got that for me for my birthday. Um, and how perfect. That really goes with this book. I'm liking this. So maybe when I finished the, the 33 day consecration, which we all know I'm not sticking officially to the 33 days, I've already done my consecration, so I'm renewing it. So some days, I honestly, I have skipped a couple of days and then I'm doing like three the next day kind of thing. So I'm coming and going. I wrote the dates in the book where it would be day one, day two, whatever. And then I'm kind of checking them off as well as I go with just, just with pencil. And you could totally do that with this book as well. Remember um, how many chapters were there? There were 10 chapters, an introduction, a prologue, so 12 things. So if you did one a week, that'd be like three months. That's, that's pretty good. You could do one a day if you're in a hurry. 
Um, and you could be done in less than two weeks. I wouldn't do that. I'm the person that likes to stretch things out, which is, yes, also why I end up taking longer to do everything and doing multiple things at the same time. Often I like doing one program in the morning and one program at night. This one, this one could be done any time of the day. There's some that really speak to doing it in the morning or really speak to doing it at night. Uh, this one I would say any point. Um, let's look at the average chapter length, 13 to 21. So that's what, seven, eight. The next one is 10, uh, yeah, 10. Next one, 12. Are they getting bigger? <laughs> the next one's bigger. Oh, and the next one's 12 again. 12 again, then 10, 10. Yeah, so so eight, eight to 12 page chapters. They're not horrible. The print is very readable, I think. The page is somewhere, it's not It's not blindingly white, but it's not the super creamy recycled page. It has nice edges. Um, it does have the chapter number. The page numbers are up here. And then the chapter number, so that's a little awkward to have them together. I think I'd want the, the chapter number and the page number separated, but that's me. And um, chapter name is there. You can see any notes are going to be footnotes at the bottom of the page. Does that one even say Pope Francis Angelus Address, March 27th, 2013? It's just done with an asterisk, so that I think that's telling us there's not going to be a huge amount of footnotes. Um, and the Bible quotes are all, can you see that? Parenthetical. So that's pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know that I'm even seeing any more footnotes. Oh, no, I think I saw one more. <laughs> Paul the Sixth. So yeah, there's not very many of those in here. And you can see this writing style is super accessible. I think you're gonna love this, especially if you're a Franciscan, we're always, you know, gospel of life, life to gospel, daily conversion is a big deal for us. It is for everyone. It's just one of our focuses. Um, and so I think you're gonna enjoy picking this up. Obviously I have not gotten into it and super read it yet. This is a book unboxing, not a book review. So after I do it, I may come back and review it again. If you've already read this, um, put put some tips in, below for us, or if you have a question about it, you know I can go and grab it and answer your question quick. So feel free to ask questions. It may even help us out in the review if you're pointing out things that we should or should not be doing. I mean, you can see there's little headers in it. What's the beginning of a chapter look like? That's a common question as well. Pretty easy to see where a chapter begins. Okay, that's it, friends. So God bless you. I hope your Lent is going well. Going well, by which I mean deli metanoia. <laughs> um, and I guess that's it. God bless you, friends. <laughs>